spawning members will have um, attained the quorum. It's about time to make a start. A warm welcome to the morning meeting of the Public Works Subcommittee. This is the Public Works Subcommittee, and this is the last meeting uh, for this year and indeed for this term, whether we should um, have extra meetings. I think we are uh, facing some difficulties in terms of um, the venues and also in terms of uh, the time available. And the approval today doesn't mean we have um, the, the ultimate um, approval because everything has to be subject to Finance Committee approval. So in this um, last PWSC regular meeting, I hope that we can endorse um, the relevant um, funding proposals for submission to the Finance Committee. The first item for discussion is um, the facilities uh, for the 3RS. Just a reminder that should members have any um, direct or indirect pecuniary interest, uh, please uh, make the disclosure of the nature of the interest in accordance with ROP 83A and ROP 84 provides for the requirements uh, in the case of um, pecuniary interest um, in relation to voting. Let me bring you up to date on the uh, funding situation. As of uh, last meeting, we have approved 14 projects to the tune of $63.78 billion. There are 13 papers on the agenda for today. Uh, items 1 to 11 are outstanding items left over from previous meetings. Item 12 and 13 are new items submitted by the administration. All 13 items involve a funding allocation of $20.15 billion. Should these projects all go through, the cumulative number of projects approved uh, will be 27, and a sum of $83.94 billion, discounting the $24 billion for land acquisition. The total allocation uh, would be $83.93 billion. Item 1 is um, to upgrade to 278LP and 402IO to Category A. Um, and this is a paper PWC 2020 uh, 21 1. And this is the upgrade um, 278LP and 402IO uh, to catch week A, an estimated cost of $1.86 billion and $2.62 billion in money of the day prices. At the last meeting uh, on the 10th of June, we started um, our discussion on this item, and we're going to be continue with our discussion today. I'm sure you have um, the list of attendance uh, for today, and the officials are more or less similar to uh, what we have uh, last time. I don't propose to read them out one by one. Mr. Wan is not here. Mr. Wichiwai, your question. Point of order, Chairman. This is our last meeting today. As we said, there are 13 items on the agenda. I've um, flipped through the, the agenda items. A lot of them um, are not controversial. But I think we can endorse them. We don't probably need to have a division. In the interest of efficiency, will the administration be reshuffled uh, some of um, the items? I don't think um, members may have any questions, um, maybe just one at the most. That would be more efficient. Items one and five are more controversial, in particular item one.
I am worried that we may be stuck with um, the 3RS. Maybe we, we could have um, endorsed uh, 11 items, but if we are st stuck with item 1, uh, we may not be able to get through all the other items. So may I suggest that um, the agenda items be reshuffled uh, so that in this uh, last uh, PWSC meeting we can endorse um, all of these items. Well, we have already uh, started on the first item, and there are many members who um, would like to put questions. And in accordance with our procedures, uh, we would have um, to get this out of the way. Of course, I'd like to uh, put this to the vote, uh, whether you support or object. At least uh, you get a chance to uh, state your position. I'd like to get this out of the way as soon as possible. For the remaining items, perhaps um, I'd like to um, invite the administration to think about it. And once we're done with the first one, it would be good um, if we can get more endorsed. Item 5. Perhaps uh, Mr. Lee. I might wish uh, to uh, consider this, Mr. Howard Lee. I might wish to consider this. Let's um, deal with item one first. Mr. Mr. Howard Lee, Chairman. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Tam, uh, for the suggestion. In fact, the administration uh, put forward all these items, having uh, consulted all the policy bureaus and Internally, we did have a very thorough dis discussion and consideration. We considered the urgency of the items and the, the, the importance um, to tie in with the government policies and the um, state of um, planning and, and so on. So in this meeting, um, the order of um, agenda items uh, has been put together after thorough consideration by the administration. This is the most um, appropriate um, order. Uh, let's deal with item one and then followed by items two, three. If we think we there are different views, major views about a certain item that maybe the government can think about this, maybe with, uh, suspending certain item, reshuffling things around. So we seem to have just two hours today. We won't have a whole lot of time, even if we do additional, if we extend the meeting, because we have council meeting following. As I made it clear in the beginning, the public works subcommittee be very difficult to hold additional meetings after the meeting today. I will invite members to start. Uh, Mr. Wu Chi Wai, speaking for a second round, three minutes. Chair. In my previous round, I focused on the dual base approach as to whether this is the most efficient way to go. At the airport, in Given the epidemic, we see a plunge in the passenger volume at the Hong Kong International Airport, and that the same goes for the cargo volume. Given this epidemic, has there been deployment or redeployment about the airport staff? Are they still focusing on passengers and cargo, or have they been assigned to do something else? Now, given this deep in the passenger volume. Now, I'm not going to get into the details. Can you give me a rough idea about the deployment of the airport staff? Uh, given the drop in demand on airport services, has the staff been deployed to other areas for other tasks? Chair, Mr. Cheng. I want to clarify, is Mr. Wu asking about all the staff or the staff belong to a certain department because we have people here from the police force and the customs and excise i'm asking about the police operational base i'll defer to ms ellis lee 
Madam Lee. Good morning, Chair and members. I want to clarify something about the question you just raised. Over the past several months, given the epidemic, you were asking about the manpower. Now, given the existing deployment at the airport, so you have around 600 police officers there. I believe many of them have undergone rigorous training for airport security. So here's what I want to find out. Given this plunge in demand for airport services, it is, uh, it's a sharp decline. Given this development, has there been special deployment arrangements for the police officers deployed at the airport? At this point, I know that there are many special constables assigned to different tasks. So for the 600 odd police officers deployed at the airport, given the sharp decline in demand, the airport services, what's the latest situation for the deployment? On the deployment side, we're tying in working with the government's anti-epidemic efforts at the Asia World Ex Export. There is work that requires input from the Hong Kong Police Force. Are you trying to say that uh, these police officers are still within the airport district. They are not designed. They have not been assigned to other districts. So we're working along with the government's anti-epidemic effort. We need to provide the minimum degree of coverage there, but there are other tasks to tie in with the government's anti-epidemic effort. Now, given the sharp decline in demand on the airport, 90% plunge in passenger volume, and similar decline in cargo volume. We don't know what will happen with the airport's future developments, but I want to know, given this backdrop, has there been changes to the deployment of your police officers? Now, along apart from working with the government's anti-epidemic effort, we're still keeping the same level of training. Training goes on as normal to ensure our officers' operational readiness. We don't want them to get out of practice on tasks under all circumstances, we want to make sure our officers are ready for any kind of emergency. Next, Mr. Ray Chan speaking for a second round, three minutes. Thank you, Chair. The paper in front of us is dated for uh, for 15th April 2020. Earlier, uh, the pen was also consulted. So this paper was probably cons uh, finalized earlier, maybe sometime towards the end of last year. For the National Security Law for Hong Kong, which was set to be passed and implemented soon, and a few days ago, we had this explanatory memorandum of the gist, the point three, uh, point three, subsection five, the Hong Kong Police Force of the HKSAR is, to, is supposed to set up a department with the capability to implement the national security law. I believe the national security law wasn't taken into account when you were drafting this paper in front of us. But one of the key functions of the facilities you have here for the operational base is counterterrorism. And counterterrorism is also one of the four key areas of the national security law for Hong Kong. So over the past several maybe weeks, have you reviewed the entire plan for the airport facilities to tie in with the implementation of national security law for Hong Kong. In paragraph 16, for example, you saying that you need to provide uh, something for the Hong Kong airport, uh, airport to provide reserve officers that so that at the time of uh, emergency major incidents, you can provide reinforcements with your officers. So for the officers undergoing training, what kind of officers are we talking about? As reserve manpower, what what should we make of that? Are you saying that apart from airport security unit officers, uh, are you also talking about riot police officers? Or officers for the National Security Commission to be set up in Hong Kong? By major incidents, what are you talking about? Are you talking about people entering Hong Kong or going out of Hong Kong? Who will take this question? I want to briefly address Mr. Chen's question. A few years ago, 
when the project about the 3RS was being talked about, we were planning the government facilities, as I pointed out previously. The operational base at the airport was being planned a few years ago for the anti counterterrorism efforts at the airport. As for the paragraph 16, the officers may be on different shifts, some are on active duty, and while other officers may be undergoing training, when the emergency comes up, officers at the training facilities can take part in frontline tasks without delay. So that's the idea. As for the details, maybe Madam Lee can elaborate. Madam Lee. Just then, well, he, taught, he, taught, you know, he gave us a comprehensive view of the things. So for the major incidents, as you brought up, involves emergencies, unforeseen events maybe casualties in large numbers for example maybe a bomb is discovered or other explosive devices are spotted in times of major incidents reserve officers will support patrolling officers and airport security officers chair she didn't address a fundamental point. I know it's all about the security of Hong Kong, but now you have an additional task of securing national national security. Has there been any review for this plan? Maybe a brief response, Ms. Madam Lee. In terms of tactics and training, we review these aspects constantly to meet uh, to in response to the international development and in response to the actual policing needs. As I showed you the clip last time, uh, conducting the drills, mil um, exercises, these are the things we do for the tactics. Next, Mr. Roy Kwong, first round, four minutes. I want to follow up on something, and maybe this is not something uh, from for Madam Lee to address. I have been following this point. It's about whether it's about something unforeseen in terms of construction for the artificial island of Hong Kong Johan Macau Bridge. Something came up about settlement, the geological matters, and then there were burst water memes. Recently, there have been questions raised about the sea sand. We're concerned about maybe there are rises in the price, the costs leading to cost overruns. And I'm also concerned about safety. Can you tell us the facilities will be on solid ground, actually? Instead of something reclaimed and due to geological concerns, and then you have building safety problems. As for the potential cost overruns, that's something I want to check with you. And second point is safety. As I'm still following the developments about the artificial island of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, as the media reports found out, there some of the buildings are somewhat a bit tilted. So I so these are questions for the government. So you. So you don't have to. So I think the ground conditions are less of a concern because the entire airport sits on reclaimed land. Who of you would take this question, Mr. Chen? Would you thank the member for his question? First, call potential cost of a run. The land reclamation is something the airport authority is responsible for, as for the cost of sea sand that's not a part of this discussion here for this uh for this one more than 140 billion plus project i think we can complete this three rs project as for the land reclaimed uh, there are two parts to there are two layers of the reclamation at the bare bottom of it there is a sewage there is a sewage sludge The cement will be put in mixed with the sludge to
to solidify the bottommost layer. As for the sand, on top there will be compression. The airport police station sits on piles. The piles goes all the way down to the rock layers. So don't have to worry about the uh, soundness of the building structure. We also looked at settlement of buildings on reclaimed land. It's really a very minor, it's a minor issue. It's a different thing from what you just brought up because so, we're using cement and something else. The sludge is really a, a concern here. But now we're mixing the sludge with the cement to solidify the whole layer. Sorry, we're on limited time. Now I can see things look good. Can you give us a pledge here? No cost overrun and no building safety problems. Can you give him a response? The design here, can you give us a pledge? This has happened so many times and you sound so confident, but then look at the artificial island, the buildings, they have safety concerns. I put the well-being and safety of our people first. Can you give us a pledge? This will be safe, no cost overrun, no delay, no request for additional funding. Can you give us a pledge? We, will look, we look at the ground conditions, geological conditions. We have included these things in our contingency fees. We have taken them into account. Thank you, Chair. Next, Tony Tear, four minutes. First, uh, Mr. Dr. Raymond, so can you do something about the lights there? Yes, thank you. The Hong Kong International Airport is a key part of Hong Kong as a hub in terms of transportation. In principle, I support enhancing the facilities at the airport. Many members are concerned about the police operational base at the airport. I want to clarify something here. There's talk of Hong Kong independence and black clad violence. And there, there's information suggesting that uh, terrorism, homegrown terrorism may develop. In terms of counter-terrorism efforts, I have a concern. These plans to put in place the facilities were drawn up before all this black-clad violence. So the first point I want to clarify, in terms of the facilities, have the recent developments be taken into consideration? This matters because we need to nip things in the butt. Prevention is important. This is something I want to get clear on. Sometimes weapons are mailed in, so the CND department facility is also important. Second point in view of the epidemic, in terms of port health facilities, are these facilities going to be adequate? Has thought been given to this aspect? If needed, then for sure I will support the funding. But if this is not taken into account, then you should think about this as soon as possible and expedite. I think this is money worth spending. So two aspects, Chair. Okay. Mr. Ching, Chairman, if I may, the Department might wish to supplement the Customs and Excise 402 IO. Uh, under that uh, project, uh, there are large-scale X-ray machines uh, and also the contraband um, detectors, and all these are intended to address um, the uh, issues raised by members. As far as um, the DH is concerned, in the light of um, the outbreak of the pandemic, um, there are facilities um, to tackle the problem. Mr. Jay, I'd like to follow up, Chairman, uh, as you know, I've always been concerned that where possible, these projects uh, should um, take care of um, the problems facing the uh, contractors. 
We have um, the permanent secretaries here. The De Development Bureau is also here. I hope that um, the SMEs um, should be um, given to care uh, during this pandemic. In terms of uh, payment, I, I did uh, raise uh, this point uh, when we discussed uh, the four hospital projects, and there was an undertaking that, as far as the payment is concerned, um, the, the vetting process um, should be um, telescoped as much as possible. We all understand the, um, the, the difficulty of the liquidity on the part of the SMEs. Right, Permanent Secretary. Um, the SMEs and also um, the, the liquidity on the part of the SMEs. Chairman, there are two issues here. First, where possible, we will um, break up um, the, the project contracts as much as possible into smaller um, units in order to um, look after the uh, SMEs. In terms of uh, liquidity, when we process the payments or when we uh, disperse the funding, uh, we will shorten the time as much as possible um, to about two weeks' time. And we hope that um, this would help um, the liquidity on the part of um, the, the businesses, big and small. I support the, uh, the funding proposal, Chairman. Dr. Helena Wong, uh, four minutes for the first round. Chairman, I heard some questions uh, raised by other members, and, and these are the questions I'd like to put. I haven't heard um, a clear reply uh, from the um, police representative. The national security law is uh, being processed um, by the NPCSC. We regret that um, there was no consultation at the council. Now, for this um, dual base design, is it there to cater for the uh, National uh, Security uh, Commissioner's Office uh, and, and also on agencies of the national security uh, from the mainland. Um, members put similar question, but I don't think I heard a clear reply. As I said last time, uh, this dual base approach back in the days when the 3RS uh, was um, given the go ahead and also was given the support by the administration, we started um, contemplating this dual base approach. The, idea of a dual base uh, design is that if one base uh, is um, interrupted, uh, then we would have another base and they can be swung into action. And the coverage uh, will be broader. And, and we have um, always said that this um, operational base is intended to uh, safeguard um, the security of the airport and, and also to achieve counter-terrorism. Dr. Wong, so when you, um, that, that was when you considered the dual base approach. There are some suggestions that um, the national security law that wasn't contemplated by the NPCSC in May, it was said that they started contemplating this idea about a year or so ago. So it doesn't make sense for you to, to uh, go back in time uh, like this. We have no idea. N none of you have any idea uh, when the NPCSC started thinking about the national security law. It may be um, in place uh, next week. My question is, the commissioner, um, national security uh, commissioner will be set up in Hong Kong. They're going to they're going to have uh, an office in Hong Kong. And they will uh, take action in some circumstances. They don't just leave it to the Hong Kong police. Now, my question for you is um, the, the commissioner's office is going to be sent up pretty soon. Will they be allowed to use the dual base or one of the bases or both 
uh, basis. I've never heard of this. I have no knowledge of that. I've never heard of uh, what the, the member said. Dr. Wang, will the police uh, representative uh, or the SB uh, representative? Thank you. As the uh, superintendent, as um, the, the head uh, of um, the, the um, bureau said, um, this is going to be 50% um, bigger and there will be um, greater uh, aircraft movement and passenger uh, volume. And we are looking at the police operation and the, the um, challenges arising from emergency and the need for public safety and counterterrorism. I'm asking you this. Uh, counterterrorism is not just uh, for the police. It is um, or the um, National Security Commissioner, Commissioner's Office is going to be doing this as well. Will they be based um, in the operational base? Other than the regular uh, patrol police, um, the, the ASU, the Airport Security Unit, is um, a, an elite uh, force uh, responsible for the protection of the airport. And counterterrorism is part of the portfolio. I'm asking you whether the National Security Commissioner Office uh, will be based in this space. Is it possible? Will you be uh, putting this in black and white? Yes, please. As I said last time, at the present moment, there is no indication that um, it's got anything to do with um, the national security law. Ms. Claudia Moore, four minutes. The, according to the national security law draft, the police uh, do have um, its own national security office. Will this um, unit be based um, in these police um, facilities at the new airport? At the airport, there is no indication uh, for the time being. So you don't know anything about that. Well, this question has been addressed repeatedly. Well, in connection with liquidity. The financing of the 3RS is something like $70 billion at the Economic Development Panel. The AA uh, said that um, they are raising funds uh, from the banks and they're not issuing any bonds from $20 billion to something like $30 billion. From the, ba from the news, um, they are raising something like uh, $35 billion. We are concerned about the, the funding of the 3RS. And you're, you're the AA is uh, not the Ocean Park. If um, they run into financial uh, difficulties, uh, there is no way the government can, can shy away from the problem. So this is related. If you look at the uh, XRL um, the, the, um, and the, there was um, a delay um, to the WKCD and there was a course overrun. I mean, the, the, um, the course overrun has been um, skyrocketing. You do have the contingency plan. What contingency is it? Can you give us the undertaking that there will not be any course overruns and, overs and, um, and delays? Mr. Ching. Chairman, as I said, a moment ago, that the, this project is um, of an urgent nature because we are tying in with um, the 3RS project. The operat operational base um, will be synchronized with um, the 3RS in 2024. And should we uh, get the support? of uh, the PwSC and the Finance Committee. We can get on with uh, the project as soon as possible, and we're going to have enough time for us to um, get this completed um, in 2024. In our design, we uh, look at the geological condition. Uh, there was some siltation and also marine sand. Uh, we are confident about the um, the ground condition. The superstructure is um, 
less of a problem. So at this stage, we have taken into account um, all the factors that, that uh, we anticipated in our budget. Ms. Mo, you make it sound as if um, there is a huge uh, security uh, demand. And at the moment, um, the security uh, services um, uh, are really muddling their way through. Now, I'm asking you about the contingency, contingency plan. There is uh, no contingency plan to speak of because you are confident and there is uh, no crisis management that would be needed. Mr. Ching, Chairman, by contingency, uh, we mean um, the 10% uh, of um, the funding that would be set aside for contingency, and that would be, in our view, enough to uh, cater for the unanticipated um, contingency. Ms. Andrew Wen, three minutes for the second round, please. Right, you just walked in. No hurry. Mr. Wen, three minutes, please. Oh, I, I'm in a bit of a rush. We had a meeting uh, next door. Now, regarding the due base, I uh, put a question uh, last time in the paper. It is said that in the um, international airport, it would be better to, for us to have a due base um, approach. I asked about the Frankfurt uh, Airport, Heathrow Airport, and so on. They don't have the due base um, operation. According to the administration, uh, they didn't have the information. They would like to uh, supplement the information. I don't see the supplementary information, have I? Yes, due base. At at the time uh, we talked about the airport in Paris and Charles de Gaulle Airport, and as for the other countries, the deployment of officers is something that it's kind of, kind of information they're not willing to give us. We're trying to find out with them. My colleagues have has all, have also done the research, so we'll just leave for later, uh, Chair. Another question. About the airport based uh, scenario for training. I don't think this was touched on previously. They're saying that you need is uh, an airport based scenario for tactics training. But now you already have something for this purpose for the car park, uh, for the car parks, or the assault course training ground, and tax revenue tower. Because you already have these provisional facilities for this training, so why are you why do you still need to build the facilities, Madam Lee? Mr. Andrew Wen just pointed out uh, these are provisional facilities or training. These are not ideal training facilities because we have to uh, take them down. We have to set them up every time we do the training. That's. So the final question for me: Do I have four minutes, Chair? You have no. You have three minutes. So I'll keep it brief. Other members just touched on this, just then. Are there facilities in the operational base or at the airport police station that will be reserved? For the, as office space or workspace for officers when the national security law is implemented in the future. At this point, we don't have any facilities for the purpose. This question, this kind of question has been raised over and over. So after my colleague gives you the paper, I will raise new questions. Next. Alvin Yuan, second round, three minutes. Mr. Yuan. Technical question. What's the progress of the reclamation project? Is it on schedule? That's my first question. Because this will have a bearing on the delivery of the site to other departments, including the police force, because the other departments will have to build facilities on top. So that's my first question. A question about reclamation. Uh, this the w 
part where we had serious delays, we've seen the works making uh, much of the progress. Also, I talked about it another, on another occasion is the progress of the reclamation. We're just one week behind schedule. If my memory does not fail me, I think 70 percent. I think the reclamation is 70 percent completed for the operational base. Work is made. The works are making good progress. So the base will be will be next to the baggage handling system because they need that for a bit of a tunnel. So it, it all works out for the. It's all working out for the reclamation. Chair. So when will the sites be handed over to the relevant departments, Mr. Cheng? I would defer to the airport authority. As Mr. Raymond Chen just pointed out, the operational base is next to the baggage transit system. It's actually ready for the baggage handling system. We have already awarded the contract, and so we're doing. We're now working on the planning, designing. Chair, my question is about something other than the baggage handling system. My question was about when would the site be handed over to the government to construct the operational base, Mr. Raymond Chang. Chair, the site is already ready. We're trying to let the airport authority get started with the works through an entrustment agreement. So the site is already ready, just waiting for the work to start. Chair, am I getting this right? If this funding proposal is passed at the finance committee in the end, so the works can get started immediately. That which also includes the police operational base. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. We haven't officially entrusted this whole thing to the airport authority. So they're working on the preliminary design with fine tuning, then the works can get started. The foundational works can will be able to get started. Chair, I'm not in engineering, so I'm I'm not sure if I'm getting it. When can you officially deliver the site to the government for construction? That's a straight question, Mr. Raymond Chang. The entire structure will be entrusted to the airport authority. So once the foundation works are done, and then they can get started with the complex. The whole, the entire works will be completed by in 2024. A short follow-up question. Is he saying that the airport authority will also take care of the operational base? That's correct. Now, given the schedule just provided by Mr. Raymond Chang just then, I think this has to tie in with the 3RS project. Next, Ms. Claudia Mo, second round, three minutes. Thank you, Chair. The supplementary paper makes reference to the travel time for the ASU officers between the flying ranges and the airport. And there will be impact on the capability of the officers to deal with the emergencies. And now, do you see this kind of emergency major incidents happening often? How many incidents have we seen over the past three years? What kinds of incidents were these? Who will take this question? I will defer to the police force, Madam Lee. I want to address this point for training. It's more than just about the traveling time. Uh, officers will also have to load arms. That means they have to grab the weapons and depart for the training facilities. The whole training takes four or five hours and then you also have to, have to factor in the traveling time, so the training easily takes up the entire day. So when our officers are at firearms training, 
we need other officers to cover those officers. This is a less than ideal situation right now because there can be many unforeseen circumstances. So we want to make good deployment of the ASU officers, officers who have to practice often, that they have to drill often, so that they can be ready for the new challenges that may arise associated with the 3RS. I asked her about what happened over the past three years. I was trying to ask her about the past five years. Because for all the talk about the impact on the operational capability of ASU officers, does that happen often? Have we seen cases, examples in the past? Madam Lee, anything to add on that point? Four years ago, uh, someone was armed, an expatriate was hold, having something like firearms and holding hostage. It took. It involved more than just the ASU officers. It was there was also other special units. We were dealing with this incident. One. Even if we just have one terrorist attack, one emergency, that's one too many. We need to stay on the safe side. What we have to protect the security of the airport for the officers, for the staff there, and the travelers there. We want to keep the reputation of our airport as one of the safest in the world. My question, the firing rangers, you said they were doing the firearms training there. Is this not strict? Isn't, is this not something strictly necessary? Like, do you, can you put the facilities elsewhere in view of the scarcity of the land resources at uh, the airport. Can you move the fire, ring, fire rangers to something like the uh, Lantau district? Brief, br uh, brief response would do, because this question has been raised many times. Uh, that kind of arrangement would be less than ideal. Once our officers are out for training, we take them one day to come back. When it comes to rescue missions at the request of the ICAO for rescue missions or firefighting, they have to take them some time to move to certain areas and retreat and moving around. These all take times. Maybe you think it's a few minutes, but those few minutes actually matter because every second matters. We're racing against time when it comes to rescue or emergency scenarios. Next, Mr. Roy Kwong, second round, three minutes. Chair, follow-up question. This is a request for $1.8 odd billion dollars for policing facilities. I want to make life difficult for Madam Lee. She's eloquent. But every time when it comes to national security law, then she's trying to dodge the issue. So I'm not going to put this question to Madam Lee. I just need more information. As I brought up previously, I want to follow up on the settlement of the artificial island of the HZM bridge. The police control tower there. We have workers who wanted to stay anonymous who disclose uh, settlement problems about the towers. That's 91 millimeters for settlement. You have works project on public dollars, so I want to make, want to make sure it's safe. Now, turning to paragraph 16 in the paper and the, the diagrams here, the operational base will be sitting on reclaimed land. As we talked about the quality with the sea sand, there's there going to be risk of settlement, cost overrun, delay. This this is annoying because we have this kind of thing happening again and again. People, government coming to us for additional funding. I can see Mr. Raymond Chang is also eloquent. If say you have settlement going happening in the future. Despite your short, despite your assurances, that's not something we want to see. So, question for Mr. Ibn Chang: Are these facilities going to sit on the land being being reclaimed or to be reclaimed for three hours? Given your eloquence, can you tell us there will be no cost, no delay, no cost overrun, and despite sitting on siltation, there will be no tilted buildings? Mr. Raymond Chang, please. Thank you, Chair. 
all these facilities we're talking about will sit on reclaimed land. There is likelihood that there will be s some sort of like some sort of settlement on reclaimed land. We anticipated that, but for the operational base, it will be sitting on piles. The piles will not be resting on the sand or the siltation. It will be it will be going all the way down to the rock layers, the bedrock. The solid piles will be supporting the operational base, so there will be no concern about settlement. Can you give us a pledge? For the record, there will be no uh, no there will be no tilted buildings, no cost overrun, no delay. There will be some sort of settlement, but that's well anticipated. And for the structures themselves they will be sitting on the piles i'm not engineer myself uh, if need i can check with engineers but you just sound like you're an architect uh, like a professional in architecture given all your professional lingo sorry mr kong i'm an engineer but, but i'm not an architect as for the settlement i am aware of that possibility i'm also aware that the building will be on piles As we pointed out, the urgency here, we want to secure funding as soon as possible so that this can tie in with the other works projects of the 3LS so that can give us more assurances in terms in terms of completing the works. We have also set aside a contingency fee to meet needs rising from unforeseen circumstances. Now uh, you you have better stay in your job before you better stay in your job until our work, these works are completed. I think Mr. Chang is very confirmed. Mr. Jeremy Tam, two minutes for the third round, please. Well, I said last time that rather than the firing range, each um, police officer uh, occupies how much space. Uh, that's um, by reference uh, to the airport police station. I, I said it would be fair uh, if um, you have to um, work it out uh, on the spot. I asked you uh, for the information, but I can't see anywhere any information supplemented. Are you not going to uh, make available the information? Or is it the case that I can't? I didn't find it. Uh, the paper dated twenty second. One seven nine, nineteen twenty, bracket oh one. There is a table. Which paper? One sixty, one seven nine, nineteen twenty, bracket oh one. Uh, that's um, the floor space of um, the proposed operational base and also um, the NOFA um, that's 4.3 uh, square meters that's in the paper I got it uh, thank you chairman question please at least we get to see that um, the NOFA is uh, really consistent, uh, 4.3 square meters. That shows um, the, the reasonableness. I, I'm not going to get bogged down on this point then. Now I've got another question which was put. Uh, it is normally answered by the police. I, I'd like to put this to the um, lens. Uh, have you tried um, Providing the firing range on land tower instead of uh, on the artificial island, I talked about a uh, firing range um, just um, in the uh, police quarters. I asked about uh, the, the the land tower as an alternative location. I'd like to ask on the bureau: uh, Is there any other alternative location uh, for the firing range? Uh, 
instead of the artificial island. Permanent Secretary, Ms. Brenda Denin. Chairman, now, as regards um, the suitable location, it would depend um, on the client department, and then uh, the Bureau will be uh, giving the assistance. If the police, uh, having regard to the operational needs, would like to have a firing range on a particular location, we would try to respect that and tie in with um, the requirements. Mr. Alvin Young, two minutes for the second round. Financial implications, uh, para um, 17. Uh, there are different breakdowns there. On course payable to AAHK, this item I, uh, $221.5 uh, million. Now, this is 18.1% uh, of the total. If you look at the footnote, This is um, the, uh, for the um, project management and uh, on cost uh, payable to the AHK. Uh, can you elaborate on this one, please? Mr. Cheng. Project management means that all the design uh, and, and site uh, supervision will come under the, the um, portfolio of the Hong Kong AA. Of course, um, the ASD would um, supervise that as well. And they need to hire people, they need to hire a uh, consultant to do the design that would incur some costs. As to the uh, on cost payable to AA, now the new base is uh, sitting on a reclaimed land. The Workers uh, will be um, traveling there by, by sea, and the Hong Kong Airport Authority has some um, the free uh, ferry services for the workers. And there are other facilities in on the uh, on the island. Uh, that there are office space, and that will be required. There are canteens, and uh, temporary uh, residential sites. All of these uh, will be incorporated into the on cost payable to the AA, Mr. Young. Para 21, the $20.18 million um, for the annual recurrent expenditure, what does it entail? Mr. Ching, there's the day-to-day -day, uh, repair and maintenance of um, the, the base uh, and also the utilities. Ms. Andrew Wen, Chairman, are you getting ready? Yes, I, I'm getting ready. Um, for the information. Uh, Mr. Jeremy Tam, one minute. Chairman, I found um, the, the paper that you referred to uh, uh, concerning the um, table. I've got a question here. So you have um, the, the store room, the laundry facilities, canteen and kitchen, uh, 1,200. Um, for the existing police station here, uh, it is 900. Uh, the staff premises are 1,000 versus 1,800. So you have one, uh, 433 and 250. Proportionally, uh, one is um, 1,000, the other one is 1,800. Now for the um, other facilities, um, 900 versus 1,200. So um, the the why why is it that um, the number is higher for the new facilities? Yes, Mr. Lee. Yes, um, the ancillary facilities. Storeroom, laundry facilities, canteen, kitchen. It is smaller than the the old one. Uh, can you explain this, please? Nine three two and one two five one. Yes. Yes. Um. The ancillary facilities. 
include the storeroom in the new operational base. As we said before, uh, this is um, the main base uh, for the ASU. So in terms of operational needs, uh, the, there is um, a um, larger demand. Um, the uh, airport um, police station I was there since uh, 1988, and things have uh, evolved. So we need the largest storeroom um, for the uh, ASU. Mr. Wuxiu Wai. Chairman, uh, very briefly. Uh, for the airport um, police station, it is uh, $50,000 per square meters. The government said that this is uh, similar to facilities of a similar scale. Now, my question is, how do you make the comparison? Of what sort of um, facilities are you making a comparison with? Can you give us more information? Um, as to um, which year did you take as that benchmark for comparison? That the building services um, it cost us um, three hundred million dollars. That would include um, the air conditioning, and there is also the uh, professional installation. If and you may uh, tell us more um, about the, uh, the professional installation, and if you can't um, give us um, the the detailed information. Um, now for these um, uh, fire services, um, the leaves, and how do you make the comparison with um, the the professional installation, the, the specialist installation? Now in government buildings, uh, presumably uh, you have these uh, basic uh, building services. Can you uh, give us um, some um, comparison in terms of um, the, the price tag? I defer to the ASD. Mr. Lee from the ASD, please. We did make com some comparison with other police stations. Uh, each police station uh, are unique. Uh, some have um, their own uh, car parks. And at Kitech, uh, we, we look at the situation. Uh, they may have a um, district cooling uh, system. Discounting all the um, facilities, uh, we um, have a general comparison. We find that uh, most of them are similar in, in, in the costing. So the costing is uh, similar. For the BS, it's uh, $331 million. You mentioned some specialist installations. I, I talked about um, the electricity, the fire prevention, so one of the basic um, facilities there. Mr. Wu? A brief follow-up, if I may. Now you have the uh, specialist installation, um, the, the water, electricity, fire prevention, so on. What, what exactly are the facilities there, Mr. Cheng? Well, they they include um, the CCTV system, the broadcasting system. In the uh, in this box, they do need these facilities. But you have another item. You have these um, building services. You have um, the the um, the F and E, and also um, the BS. The broadcasting system doesn't come under this, Mr. Wu. You have um, the build uh, the building services, and you also need um, the CCTV and you know, all the extra hardware. They're not a part of the building services. I understand that, but can you elaborate further on on this one, please? And also um, the antenna system. Now the the water and electricity they are a a must. And for example, for the police, they will have uh, more CCTVs other than the normal uh, number of uh, CCTVs. They also have the broadcasting system that they will be um, adding. And these are the uh, specialists. Um, installations. As I explained um, at the very beginning, this meeting uh, is 
going to be the last uh, regular PWC meeting for this term and also for this um, year. It would be hard for us to have um, to schedule additional meetings um, because of um, the the uh, sheer number of items at the Finance Committee. Uh, some members said that um, there are other items uh, that, that can be endorsed um, really easily. And I, I think I have to draw a line there for this item. Uh, for those uh, who wish to, to um, make further comments, uh, please press the button. I'm going to draw a line there. There are seven more members. I'm going to draw a line there. Adichu, Jeremy Tam, Wichi Wai, Claudia Mbo, Alvin Young, Andrew Wan, and Roy Kwong, seven more members. Ms. Claudia Mbo, two minutes for the third round, please. Chairman, thank you. Now for the 3RS, I um, feel really upset uh, by the administration. They bypass some um, the, the let go. They're raising funding from outside sources. As I said, um, this uh, financing arrangement is uh, really horrendous. That they, they include um, the green bond and, and, and so on. And they're raising fund uh, from the bank to the tune of $35 billion. If um, you can't even uh, get the financing for the 3RS sorted out, you are seeking funding uh, for the police facilities and also the facilities for other departments. It seems that um, you're not you're not um, following the usual uh, practice, but these are the government facilities, and the government is responsible uh, for the financing. The three RS is also a government facilities, but they are circumventing the let go uh, deliberately. It is plain. I asked you about the national security law and the policing arrangement. Has it got anything to do with um, the policing facilities here in the 3RS? I asked so many times, I drew a blank. I don't think um, the national security uh, agencies uh, will be based um, in this uh, operational base. Uh, it may be safer for you to uh, not to answer the question, but you are. Um, being unfair to Hong Kong people, you say you have 10% um, contingency and you will be able to cope with um, the, the contingency situation. But the 3RS is um, you st still uh, haven't got, got it sorted out for the 3RS. What about the facilities there? Not okay. uh, Mr. Raymond Chen, maybe you would take the last question. And the other questions were raised over and over. As we made it clear on Monday for the 3RS, we're confident that we can stay within the original budget and the timetable. We can get those done. Thank you, Chair. Next, Mr. Andrew Wen. Third round, two minutes. I have been questioning the necessity of this facility. My colleagues has done some online research, and I've done some, some uh, research myself. The Frankfurt Airport, they have just one operational base. I'm not sure why I was told that they have no information on this. Did the police really find out about the arrangement at the several airports, Heathrow or the, uh, that airport in Japan? Is it truly necessary to have a dual base in the airport. At the previous meeting, in fact, pre prior to the previous meeting, I did my own research. As for Frankfurt Airport, I didn't touch on that particular airport. The, the airport over there didn't disclose any information on deployment and other details to us. Did you get in touch with them directly? In terms of manpower and tactics, we wanted to find out more information. We wanted to know what their deployment is like, but then we haven't been able to secure the information. But the information that you were able to secure, we 
was provided in the previous meeting. I know there there's so much to cover, but you, it's okay. But I just want to get this straight. Last time, okay, I'm aware of what you told us about the Israel airport. But what about the Kennedy Airport, Heathrow Airport, the Frankfurt Airport? Is it truly necessary to have two bases at the airport? So, are you saying that you checked with these airports, you did research, but you haven't been able to secure it? We have done research. Are you doing your research on your own? Then why is it that I just made, I just found this on the internet? But bear in mind that we can't do this comparison of Apple to Apple to with every air airport out there. Chair, I'm. My question is: Has the German research dig deeper into one base airport? Because they tell, like I said this may be conf confidential issues. They can disclose. This is about integrity. Last time, we gave you information about Israel and France. We also found out information about other countries. Want to f wanted to find out something about manpower tactics, but these airports weren't able to provide us with information. I did two third round two minutes. Thank you, Chair. In enclosure one, paragraph four. There is an increase in policing work, an increase in demand for policing services, and that's why you need the new training facilities and other facilities. Here's my question. The third, the three runway project, I know the reclamation is going on, but the works are yet to be completed. A new passenger building, the third passenger building, part of it is completed. But then we don't know if the remaining part will be completed. We don't know when it will be completed. Because the airport authority never disclosed, never publicized the master plan for 2035. For the new police facilities to be built. Have you already taken into account the new terminal building of the three runway or are you just estimating everything based on whatever that is already completed for your future expansion plans mr raymond chang we briefly touched on this if you look at the manpower and there will be a 50% increase in the size of the land for the airport. So we expect an increase in manpower that of uh, around 250 officers that will to be accommodated. From the establishment of the airport police station or establishment around 400 odd officers. And now that we have, uh, over time you have more passengers using the airport, but then there has been no increase to the size of the airport pol police station. But if you look at the hardware, you have to do something about it. But my question, for the 250 officers to be increased to the airport, are you going to increase the manpower further to the airport? Now we're just making available the site the police force will take into account the needs at the passenger building and maybe increase manpower accordingly. If there is more passenger flow, then the force, the police force will make adjustments to manpower appropriately. Next, Mr. Roy Kwong, third round, two minutes. Chair, simple question for me. This is a request for the $1.86 billion. The three RS reclamation works aren't even completed yet, and they want to build a police facility. They, I asked the government about possible cause of a run delay. I, 
I just want to make sure we're spending public funds properly. Now you can you can give a, you can talk with confidence, but we just need a pledge. Let's look at what happened yesterday. Uh, at the Penis Bay, a, a supervising staff was there from the CEDD. He got beaten up because he wasn't willing to sign the certificate of compliance. He got beaten up. Now, if something goes wrong with the works there, you just don't get this madam to go there for you. For those of you on top of the hierarchy, talking with confidence, saying everything will work out, no cause of a run uh, with uh, the high speed express rail link. The previous officials aren't even here today. So this, this is my question to you for the third time. Can you give a pledge? You will not ask the Finance Committee of the Public Works Subcommittee for, for the funding to cover cost overruns. You have a budget, follow your budget. Don't be thinking that you can come back to us for additional funding. I think the chair will agree with us. We shouldn't be just covering whatever your, the cost blowouts. This is my third time asking you, can you give us a pledge? Make proper use of public funds. I think Mr. Raymond Chang is not just a airport authority's official. As an engineer, he also explained this matter to us. But since you're raising this matter again and again, I want to see if Mr. Raymond Chang has anything to add. Of course, we will pledge that we will make prudent use of public funds. We can also pledge that we will closely supervise the works. The office, there's a dedicated office of the Transport Housing Bureau and the Architecture Services Department. We will be closely monitoring the works. Next, Mr. Wu Chi Wai, fourth round, one minute. I'm sorry. It should be it's Mr. Elfen Yuan, one minute, fourth round. Just finish your coffee, Mr. Yuan. Follow-up question. Recurrent expenditure. By recurrent expenditure. It's for the police facilities. Have you done any comparison? Police, comp police facilities of a similar size. Are we seeing a similar level of recurrent expenditure, Mr. Raymond Chang? Or who would take this question? We're talking about the twenty million odd dollars for recurrent expenditure. For this kind of structure, it's at a reasonable level because it covers the uh, regular expenses, the fire installations, maintenance, utilities, repairs. That's a reasonable level of recurrent expenditure. Chair, for, of course, you give us information that you find reasonable. But my question is. Have they done any comparison? Are, say, electricity tariffs, are these, are they at similar levels? Have you done that sort of comparison to help us understand this issue better? Or is it the case that you just don't have the information at hand? Maybe can you provide us with further information? Or we can ask them for supplementary paper on this information for the twenty million odd dollar recurrent expenditure. Give us a breakdown on that. Chair, the police operational base, the firing range. This is some. This is a unique setup. So I will look into this. Can you just give us supplementary information? We don't need to go into fine detail, but uh, just give us. A, Supplementary paper, Mr. Wu Chi Wai, for around one minute. It's a further question about clarification. We talked about a specialist installation. You gave us an example. Uh, maybe it's, uh, satellite systems and stuff. But my understanding is that building services, so by BS system, I know there may be wiring, pipes, but in terms of furniture and equipment, you have a separate item for that, furniture and equipment item. 
Uh, there's also an item called communication cable and associated works. Now I know the utilities are there in building services, and then you also have specialist installations. What do you mean by the specialist installations? I just I need a proportion. What's the percentage the specialist installations taking up alongside those utilities, fire service installations? Mr. Michael Lee from the ASD. Uh, let me just clarify this. Covers broadcasting systems, alarm systems, burglar alarms, in fact. And there is also the CCTV system. These are the specialist installations. There are other items you brought up uh, for the uh, communication cable associated work. These are equipment outside the police station, police operational base. So for the building services, we're talking about equipment inside the buildings. But you said something in addition to the utilities. Are you saying that they take up a very minuscule percentage? Can you give us a breakdown of the percentages? I got the impression that the specialist installation take up quite a sizable percentage. Can you give us supplementary papers after the meeting? I think that will clear things up to help members understand what's here, going on here. Mr. Jeremy Tam, fifth round, one minute. I want to focus on PWFC 179, the supplementary paper in the form of a letter. Operation-related facilities. And there's the operational facilities for the police dock unit, or PDU, for the airport police station and the new operational base. How many police docks do you expect to deploy how many police docks can you actually accommodate? A question for police force, Madam Lee. Police docks are part of the patrolling duties. Right now, we have around 14 police docks in the airport police district. So you will have 14 in the future. Uh, we will have to look at the kind of needs in the future. Chair, and I request that this discussion be adjourned. Mr. Jeremy Tam has asked that this discussion be adjourned. In accordance with our procedure, the PWSC procedure 33, Rule 33, members can ask to adjourn the discussion item for once. The member making this request, please press the request to speak button to speak for three minutes. Mr. Jeremy Tam, three minutes. Chairman, with, with regard to this item, um, it's not a problem in terms of the practical uh, issues. The uh, 3RS um, means that the airport is bigger and, and the passenger volume is uh, higher. It's, it makes sense uh, for, for us to build um, the police facilities there. And we mentioned um, the Frankfurt Airport, and um, they also have three runway system, but they're not um, three runways in parallel. They have cross runways, and the area is um, not as large as ours uh, with um, the three runway system. If you ask me whether we need um, these facilities, we we do need these facilities for the three RS. I um, move a motion to adjourn the discussion simply because of the training facilities. The reclamation is causing us um, $140 billion. I'm not sure whether there is overspend. The land is uh, really precious, and we are sacrificing a lot of the ecology uh, to make this happen. So the, the land utilization has to be very cautious. What I can't stomach is um, the training facilities. Why is it that um, you want to make it closer? If you want to make it closer, why don't you have the firing range um, just, just um, on the ground floor of the police quarters? Or are you going to have um, the, the firing range in every police station? Don't we have any other alternative um, location in Dongchong? It's not far to go from Dongchong to the airport, even from the northern tip um, to the southern tip, it would be 
a longer distance than if you travel from Dongchong to the airport. If emergency occurs, it all depends where the emergency occurs. As I said at the very beginning, I hope that the administration uh, would um, take advantage of this last meeting to, to get through all the non-controversial items. And you, you don't entertain this idea. I think other than items 1 and 5, all the rest of the items are uncontroversial. And we don't need to um, to uh, separate them out for, for a separate voting. They can be endorsed at the Finance Committee. Is it because of the police facilities that we cannot reshuffle the items? I hope that we can adjourn this item so that we can get through all the rest of the the uh, uncontroversial items. I hope that the administration would have regard to my points. We still have time uh, to, to get this done. Mr. Ray Chen, three minutes, please. Chairman, thank you. Chairman, I go along with um, this German motion. Mr. Tam um, was being nice uh, this morning to start with at the ESC or here at um, the PWSC. Members do cherish um, the, the hope that they would like to see the uncontroversial items endorsed and they will not be separated out for voting at the Finance Committee. And then after the first item at the Finance Committee, they can be put to the vote for endorsement. Remember at the ESC, there, there are some hospital projects. Uh, there is some um, the 10-year hospital construction program and we got this done within the last few minutes and there was also the aviation safety item that, that uh, was gone out of the way. I think we have to come back to this item even if we manage to adjourn this item today the government can still um, shove it to the finance committee it can jump the queue to put on the first and second item and that is um, the power of an executive led government but we hope here in this council that for these uh, libraries, uh, road infrastructure, school conversion, we hope that we can get on with these um, as soon as possible. I, like Ms. Colombo, am against um, the 3RS. Now, uh, we are already committed to this, and we have to, to, to um, deal with um, the security facilities. And if uh, we adjourn this, and uh, the government doesn't put this to the Finance Committee, we are going to see a doubling of um, the price tag because they haven't uh, talk, talked about um, the, the national security law implications. Officials at this rank are reluctant to address um, any questions regarding the likelihood of um, the mainland agencies being stationed there and, and also whether there, there are any uh, detention facilities there. They are reluctant to, to address this. I'm sure that the top echelon must have uh, considered this. Uh, John Lee must have considered this. Now, if um, they're going to get this um, into place on the 1st of July, they must be um, well prepared. Mr. Jeremy Tam also mentioned the firing range. Um, I don't think I'm convinced uh, logically. I, I think it would be... It would be um, uh, the fastest um, mode if uh, you have all the police officers living on the airport island and then you have um, all the operational readiness. Mr. Wichuai, three minutes. Chairman, I, I speak in support of uh, the adjournment motion moved by Mr. Tam. In these meetings, we asked about uh, whether we can have um, a um, bigger police station uh, to deal with um, the 3RS or, or do we need this uh, dual base approach. I've always been of the view that um, to, to meet the new demands, it would be a good idea for us to have a larger police station that would, be, that would mean uh, a better utilization of the land space and it would mean a more reasonable and more uh, appropriate arrangement. Now, the the uh, rationale uh, for a dual-base approach is that 
that um, they they would take uh, less time to to travel from one point to another. But if uh, you can you can cite it more uh, centrally, it would be a more desirable approach, and this is uh, more in keeping with um, the principle of um, utilizing the 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 scarce uh, land space uh, more judiciously. I don't think we should sacrifice um, the the precious uh, land. Uh, floor space um, because of the uh, police facilities. Also, I've um, asked about the uh, three hundred and thirty-one million dollars for the BS. In the footnote, uh, it says that they have uh, taken into account the um, the, the electrical um, ventilation, water uh, installations, and they also have the specialist installations. What what are the the specialist installations? What are they all about? From what I heard. It seems that they have to do with um, the, um, the the ducting, the, the the cabling, and so on. And I don't think these um, form part of the the specialist installations. And you should have this uh, in the uh, F and E uh, vote. Now, why why do you put uh, CCTV in the um, the building services um, vote as well? I can't see this uh, being a big uh, sum, and uh, for you to to uh, to put them here, it would be um, a pretty large uh, price tag. It seems that the officials cannot uh, really address this particular issue, and also the total um, cost of the project. Uh, we're talking about fifty thousand uh, dollars per square meters, and for for the uh, eight story uh, block. Uh, project uh, that we've seen hard, we hardly ever do we see a price tag of uh, fifty thousand dollars per square meters. You may uh, discount the uh, district cooling uh, system. Um, it may work out more or less the same. For the building uh, services, Dr. Fernando Jung, three minutes, please, Chairman. I support this German motion by Mr. Jeremy Tam. I think we have to um, get things uh, cleared up first. Mr. Tam um, raised the point about the dual base approach. Does it represent uh, the best uh, utilization of the precious land on the on the artificial island? I, I think we have lagging doubts in our mind. What I'd like to put to the administration. Is whether these facilities have anything to do with the implementation of the national security law? The police made it clear. John Lee, in particular, uh, said that there is going to be a special unit to be created in the police force to deal with the national security. And from what we heard about the national security law, the CPG is going to be setting up an office of the Commissioner for National Security, and this office can exercise jurisdiction to implement the national security law. Now, for these facilities at the airport, will they be used by the Commissioner's office to, to implement the national security law? We put a few questions. We put questions a few times. The superintendent couldn't answer the question. We we cannot be sure about the national security law for now. And we heard that there is going to be a, a detention uh, facility that can um, detain the suspects um, under the national security law indefinitely. If we're going to have a facility like this, um, I don't think I can bring myself to support it. Also, the in the airport facilities, to what extent uh, can the commissioner's office um, can implement the law? And how are they going to be implementing the law? Would they be armed? Or would they be resorting to to force? And in these facilities, will they be interrogating suspects? And in what way are they going to be in? Interrogating people without any clear idea. I don't think I would be in a position to support this. Will the administration please 
uh, put things beyond doubt as to whether the police facilities uh, will end up being used uh, by the special specialist unit or, or whether they will be used uh, by the um, commissioner's office. And will the facilities uh, be uh, used uh, by the, the commission in any way? Ms. Collier three minutes. Of course, I support this German motion uh, raised by Mr. Jeremy Tam. The 3RS um, is uh, likely to be the most expensive um, project. It started off uh, from $80 billion and now it's ballooned to $140 billion. Uh, it's all set to be uh, completed in 2024 and it is uh, four years away. The AA uh, has been saying that we don't have to be worried about um, the, the finance and they, they will uh, be able to, to cope uh, financially. If um, the AA is uh, going to run into trouble financially, the government will have to, to step in. You cannot say that um, before 2025, um, the AA has the financial financing package and the government doesn't have to step in and inject funding. They are building these police facilities on the 3RS and all the rest of the government facilities. And they are seeking funding here at this council. Uh, this is some um, taxpayers' money. It seems that um, it is still pie in the sky. You don't even have the runway. And why do you have to rush into this? And you are trying to, to uh, put these controversial police uh, facilities um, as the first item on the agenda. Why don't you put all the other bread and butter issues ahead of this? And there is, there is no, no problem endorsing them. Like Mr. Ray Chen said, the government uh, can do this uh, through the back door. Uh, I mean, even if uh, we, we uh, reject this, well, it's unlikely that we're going to reject it because there are so many uh, shoe shiners um, who will uh, bend um, to the government's wishes. But we are not confident in this 3RS project. Is it going to be another? white elephant. We have an abundance of white elephants in Hong Kong and you and I mean you can approve yourself to drive through the um, Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge and if you go there um, there is nobody there. And you are trying to ram this through and this um, aggressive approach is uh, raising a lot of um, doubts. But the first thing I can think of is well take the incinerator as an example. If out of the blue someone says, hey, let's build a palace museum and bypass the legislative council, the Hong Kong Jockey Cup will foot the bill. So we don't even know if the museum will be charging an entrance fee. Chair, I find it regrettable to see what the government is doing there. The government knows this is the last PWSC meeting today. The next item is about a few road works, flyover footbridges. The footbridges, escalator for the footbridges. If things go, if we just drag on here, then we won't be able to deal with that project. And then we have a pro something about a poly use library ex revitalization extension. I believe that won't be controversial. And then we have a redevelopment and conversion works for a middle secondary school in South K1. Going on, a recommendation for Long Kuan may be controversial. And then we have the joint user government office building area, Chen Kuan No. Next, animal management and animal welfare building complex in Kai Tech development area. Several items I just brought up are unlikely to be controversial items. And I believe members here will want to get them endorsed as soon as possible. So the government knows full well that this item we have is highly controversial and, and just refuses to move up to prioritize other items. 
either you just want to hold this hostage or you just don't care about the other items. Take the municipal solid waste charging bill as an example. There's all talk from the government. What has the government done? It can't sort out the political issue and now the government can't even sort out the livelihood issue. You just l let the issues fester. Look at these works projects. You can get them through quickly, but then you just refuse to get them endorsed. There is something seriously wrong with the government's mindset. If the government is willing to amend its ways, this is look at the German motion from Germany. This is an opportunity for the government to deal with the other livelihood items on our backlog. Look at how many items can we can get endorsed. It can certainly meet, Chairman, your target. So I believe, as a matter of principle strategy, we should seriously consider and pass this adjournment motion. Other members brought up the point about the necessity of the police facilities. The police force is trying to use the scarce land resources. This is a disproportionate measure. So this is a huge amount of public resources. The police can convince Hong Kong public to use the land. That's enough justification to adjourn this item. Miss Alice Mack, three minutes. Chair, of course, I object to the adjournment. Members said we have livelihood items lining up, and they cite that as a justification for adjourning this item. Had they brought up this adjournment at the beginning of the meeting, that would have made sense. But just then, look at what happened for those watching the webcast. It should be clear on this. We were approaching the end of the discussion. The chairman drew the line. I have been sitting here all along when Mr. Jeremy Tam, he was the second last person to speak after the chair drew the line. Normally, like this item was almost there for a vote, but look at what happened. Towards the end of the discussion, Mr. Jeremy Tan moved that this item be adjourned so that we have to conduct further discussions. Before me, several members spoke each for three minutes, and we have other members lining up to speak. That would be more than 10 minutes to go. So they so what we're having now is that we're going to spend a lot more time by adjourning the motion at the end, towards the end of the meeting. Are they really trying to help us deal with the livelihood items? Had they not moved to adjourn this item, then we would be able to move on with the livelihood items at this meeting. This, the other members said they don't like the training facilities of the police facilities. They just object to everything about the police. They, and they are sacrificing the livelihood items here. We're going to talk about the, uh, the Castle Peak Road, Castle Peak Bay, and escalators for the footbridges. Look at the time we've spent. This is this something we all want. It's, the establishment and those who want to burn together. And look at what happened here. Uh, the people, there are people there who don't like the police training facilities. That's why these members are objecting this item and they want to drag down the footbridges for the f and the escalator. The local residents, they have been waiting for the escalator for many years and, they, and they're not getting it now. So I want to make this clear. There's more to the not a story than a German. Had the, had we vote, had there been no a German, then we would have been able to put the item to a vote, and we would be dealing with the livelihood items. The German item came about because there are these people who don't like the police, don't like the government, and they raise questions about the national security law. We don't have the details yet. This question should be put to the National Security Commission's office or whoever is related. Next, Dr. Helena Wong, three minutes. I need to offer a rebuttal to what Ms. Alice Mack was saying. She came in too a bit too late. She said, well, had we adjourned this item at 8.30, then she would have supported the adjournment. 
she really should have stayed to listen to what I have to say as she's she has just left chair. Mr. Jeremy Tam brought up the suggestion, hey, can you swap the items on our agenda? I know the police, the, the agenda at the police facility may be controversial, so is the one about Long Kung Tan. Can we, if we can swap the items around, then we can get the livelihood items in store endorsed. These are not very controversial items. Of course, I want the noise enclosure to get endorsed for the Gascoigne Road flyover for the Central Kowloon route, and for the Poly Yi Library revitalization, and the Hong Kong Chinese Women's Club College item. I support adjourning this item about the police facilities. Not, I'm going to stop here because I want to wait for more details about national security law. Mr. Andrew Wen, three minutes. I don't have anything else to add. I'm extending the meeting all the way to 10.45. Mr. Roy Kwong, three minutes. Nothing special for me. Thank you, Chair. Ted Ho. Thank you, Chair. I'm in favor of adjournment. Here's why. It's something about the ordering of these items. I think this, the government is taking this personally. They put the controversial item first, and they and they put the livelihood low, not very controversial items behind those. That's a problem. My question for Low White Quark: Why the hurry? You have to let people finish the questions. I arrived early. I've been listening to the questions raised by members. I have taken note, and then you draw a line. I was listening to this now news interview on now, and they just wrote a line. This is this is just wrong. I wanted to raise questions, but I didn't get the chance to raise questions. I haven't raised a single question at the meeting today. The White Quark, look at what you've done here. You're drawing a line. You want to hurry things through, but you have to honor procedural justice. Now, coming back to the item here. The three runway project bypassed the Legislative Council. If you say we are already we are already committed, but then any shortfall in funding, you just come back for additional funding. How can you get us to support you? Any facilities, any construction works. If you're so confident about these projects, then why are you coming to the electrical for additional funding? Why didn't you secure electrical's consent when you were trying to get started with a three runway project? And now you're asking for money for the facilities. Let's leave aside the importance or the impact on the economy. As a matter of public administration, this, is, this isn't something that you should have done, that, you, that you're asking us for funding today. I didn't get a chance to raise questions. It makes perfect sense for members to ask questions about the national security law. Uh, there will be a national security organization here, and then there will be a special branch in uh, department in the police force. So now you have a new police facility. We ask you how many of officers would you be deployed there? How would you enforce the law? But you haven't been able to address these questions. And how can we endorse the funding proposal? It's not just about the three runway. We will ask you similar questions whenever you have police facilities in the future. Bear in mind that the police force has lost all credibility. They don't go by principles in the eyes of the public, they just don't like you. It's our job to get to the bottom of things and ask questions. Next, Mr. Eddie Chu, three minutes. Thank you, Chair. You're asking us for $1.8 billion for the police operational base and for all this counterterrorism and training facilities. That can't be that. It's impossible in 2020. Look at Kong Apo. What do you call it? 
we have a nickname for it, the Sun Kung Lang. You're, you're keeping information from us. We ask you what the facilities there will be. You refuse to, to tell us about them. Now you're asking us for funding for asking for facilities at the airport. Here's what you want. You just want all the resources for yourself, for the police. So everyone gets everyone gets quarters and ten thousand dollars pay every day. You just want the police to have control, complete control for our community. And now there's talk of a national security law. You're just using counterterrorism to crack down on the the discontent about the dictatorship of the Chinese Communist Party. We all know how politics goes here. Even if you get this item endorsed at PWSC today, then we would keep asking questions and we would ask for the ask that the item be voted on separately at the finance committee. You, we know there will be items that can get endorsed now, but then once this item goes to the finance committee, they will, the uh, the item will get bogged down. It's inevitable to have what we have here because people in Hong Kong don't like the police. They give the police money and power, but then the police just abuse the power and becomes a lapdog of the Communist Party. That's a fact. I will say this again and again. You can bad mouth us, but just think just think about it. How many people actually support you? And Miss Alice Mack, please just shut up. You're trying to look at the national security law. You're trying to get it passed first before announcing details. Why don't you just go out without putting on clothes? Let's go to Tai Wo Hao and say that Alice Mack is fully behind the police, national security law, and behind the idea of giving most of Hong Kong's resources to the police force. Then let's go to Tai Wo Hao and ask members of the public. Next, Mr. Yan Chen. I think we have to have mutual respect. I think we have to have mutual respect. I don't think you should um, twist um, Ms. Anderson's um, point. Now, uh, for you to adjourn this item, um, you will be um, bringing um, all the rest of the items um, to to the knees. Now, for you to move on the adjournment motion, um, we have um, the member from Carlton West um, showing concern about the guest going. Uh, Roll fly over. If she is so concerned, um, there is uh, no reason why you should uh, move this adjournment motion and block all the rest of the items. Those uh, who said they are concerned about animal welfare, item seven is about the uh, animal uh, welfare uh, management and uh, welfare building complex at Kai Tak. Now, we were just about to put this to the vote, and and you. Both these adjournment motion. Uh, what is your motivation? I don't think you should include a bad motive to other members. We are saying that uh, we we shouldn't um, resort to this um, to resolve the problem. I think uh, for you to adjourn uh, the item today, the only consequence is all the rest of the items, animal man management, animal welfare, building, guest going road, um, noise enclosure, they would be a goner. And if uh, we, we put it to the vote, uh, we, we better do it uh, now. Administration? Chairman, if I may um, um, make a response in brief. The 3RS is going to be very important to the aviation hub um, in Hong Kong. As um, the passenger and cargo volumes increase, um, the 3RS uh, will be uh, needed. All these uh, facilities that we are talking about today uh, will 
uh, certainly upgrade the security of the 3RS. Members mentioned um, land uh, resources. We know that um, the land resources are very precious. We have to make a suitable arrangement. We are, in fact, uh, moving in this direction in our planning. As to the um, costing, we give the undertaking that we will monitor the the um, construction uh, to make sure that it's going to be a no frills project, and we can entrust um, the the facilities to the airport. National security law. Uh, members seem to be conflating the two issues. The administration has responded to this. The whole purpose of this project is um, for the sake of the aviation hub and for the for the construction of um, the three RS. Uh, Mr. Tam. Uh, one minute. I, I don't need it. Uh, since you're in a rush, uh, we better put this to the vote. Um, let's uh, ring the bell for five minutes for division. I have not received any uh, 32A uh, motion without notice. I am not going to um, entertain any 32A uh, motions. So after voting um, on this adjournment motion, I'll be uh, putting the item to the final vote. If we can get this item out of the way, uh, shall we have um, the next item? We don't normally entertain the items uh, during the extended time, but this is the last meeting, and it seems to be um, that members are in support of um, the, the road um, infrastructure project. If we can get this uh, out of the way, it would be good. Uh, Will members please um, stop shouting in their seats? Uh, 
We got a further extension uh, unless um, there is an objection. Members, we're voting on uh, Mr. Jeremy Tam's motion to adjourn the discussion of this item. So please take note. Will members please proceed to vote? Before I um, end the voting, please. Check your votes. This is um, an adjournment uh, motion. All done. All right, voting now ends. Let's display the results. 30 present, 13 for, 16 against, no abstention. The motion is uh, negatived. I now put um, the item to the vote. Point of order. What point of order? Chairman, about your decision to draw a line. I wasn't even given a chance um, to speak. Why did, did you brutally draw a line there? Will you offer us an explanation? I expect, please ring the bell for five minutes. We're putting this item to the vote. Ms. Alice Mack claims a division. This is not a point of order. I'd like to take this opportunity to say this. After this item uh, has been voted on, uh, whether in favour or against, I hope the members would agree that we would um, extend the meeting a little bit further to cover uh, one, or, one or two more items. Uh, we have um, the council meeting at 11. Um, we can... Um, Extend um, by a little bit more. Some items are agreed uh, by members, and if uh, we can get these out of the way, we can um, submit them to the finance committee. And I'll be consulting members again. Uh, if uh, you're in agreement, uh, we will so proceed. Yes, please. Mr. Chen, it is not realistic uh, for you to say this. There are three conditions. First, you don't uh, ask members. Second, uh, you don't uh, have any division. And you don't have uh, the item singled out for separate voting. Well, even if we endorse the item, you can ask for separate voting at the Finance Committee. It depends if members are 
an agreement. If we don't claim division, then we can uh, proceed uh, faster. And if uh, we can extend a little bit further, we can um, get more items out of the way. Ms. Alice Mack, Chairman, I hope that uh, you would deal with uh, the next item, the Taiwan How um, footbridge. Um, people have been waiting for an awful long time. Uh, yes, members are in support of this item. I heard that. There are members who, who mentioned uh, their support for the library extension. Well, we may be uh, arguing uh, back and forth. I hope still uh, members will support um, the livelihood issues. There are some items that um, have a sense of urgency, uh, like, like this one. Uh, this is terribly important to the three RS. Of course, we do have our own considerations, our own voting right. Uh, well, if you press the button, uh, you get the floor to speak, but you didn't press the button. Uh, it's entirely members' prerogative um, to decide uh, when to speak. I'm acting in accordance with um, the, the rules of procedure. We are uh, voting on PwC 2020 20 to 21 um, 1. Before I uh, bring the voting to a close, uh, please check your votes. Voting now ends at display the results. 30 present, 16 in favor, 13 against, no abstention. Does any member um, insist on a separate voting at the FC, uh, Mr. Wu? Are you all in agreement that uh, we extend um, the meeting a little bit further to cover as many items as possible? Now we're on to um, the second item. Item 2, A57TH, noise encloses a guest going road flyover. A five three TH widening of Castle Peak Road, Castle Peak Bay, eight fifty TH, New Wang Tong River Bridge, and one ninety T B retrofitting of escalators for footbridge across Castle Peak Road, Kwai Chong, the MTR Taiwan House Station, Exit B, PWSC paper twenty twenty number six. This is um to um Upgrade um, the projects to CAT A at a cost of four hundred eighty two million seven hundred fifty five million ninety nine million and forty nine million dollars in money of the day prices respectively. For these items, the government consulted the relevant panels. At these meetings members supported taking these items to the PWSC for endorsement. The gist of the these discussions has already been tabled. Mr. Michael Tien, you want to have a question? We were talking about uh, vo voting without asking questions. Uh, can you be brief, Mr. Michael Tien? I just ask that this item be voted on separately. And we can deal with that after we pass this. Members who are in favor of this item, pull up your hands, please. Clark, can you count those in favor? 15 in favor. Anyone against? Abstentions? No. So this item is passed. Mr. Michael Teen has asked that this item be voted on separately at the Finance Committee. Following that, we have the third item, 29EK Library Extension and Revitalization. Late paper PWSC bracket 2020-21 number two. Members are invited to recommend to the finance committee the upgrading of 29 EK to category A 
at an estimated cost of $406.6 million in money of the day prices. The th on the 3rd of May 2019, the government consulted the panel on education. Members supported uh, submitting this item to the PWSC for deliberation. The gist of the discussion has been, dis has been tabled. So for this item, so members generally in favor, so no one's asking questions. We'll put this to a vote. Members who are in favor, put up your hands, please. I see almost everyone. 13 in favor. Those against, no objection, no abstention. This item is passed. No member has asked that this be voted on separately at the Finance Committee. Agenda item number four, 95EB regarding the partial redevelopment and conversion of the Hong Kong Chinese Women's Club College at 2B Taichung Street, Saiwan Ho, P Paper PWSC, bracket 2020-21, number four. It's about upgrading of 95EB to Category A at an estimated cost of $285.3 million in money of the day prices. On the 3rd of January this year, the government consulted the panel on education. Members were in favor of uh, submitting this item to the PWSC. The gist of the discussion of the panel has been tabled. No members has any question to ask. So a question to everyone, those in favor of this item, a show of hands, please. 13 in favor. Any objections? Abstentions? No. This item is passed. Any does any member want this item to be voted on separately at the finance committee? No. Mr. Jeremy Tam, I have a suggestion. If you're getting started with item agenda item number five, I know members have many questions to ask. How about we jump over to item six? We don't have much time left. If we have less controversial items that can be put to a vote and submitted to the finance committee, I, I think we should really should be getting to those less controversial items because items like number five will be controversial. Secretary General, you agree with that arrangement? Yes, I agree with that. So let's jump to agenda item number six. 125KA Joint User Government Office Building in Area 67, Chen Kuan Old Paper PWSC Bracket 2020-21 Number 5. Members are invited to recommend to the Finance Committee the upgrading of 125KA to Category A at estimated costs of $5228.4 million in money of the day prices. Uh, this year, earlier this year, this item, uh, the government already consulted the, finance, uh, the relevant panel and the agreed to take this item to the PWSC for deliberation. A just discussion has been tabled. Those in favor, put up your hands, please. All of you in favor? No objection, no abstention. Uh, separate voting at Finance Committee, anyone? No. Agenda item number seven. 187 GK Animal Management and Animal Welfare Building Complex at Kayatech Development, paper PWSC bracket 2020-21 number seven. Members are invited to recommend to the Finance Committee the upgrading of 187GK to Category A at an estimated cost of $881.9 million. Last year, in October, the panel on food and environmental hygiene was consulted. Uh, the report of the panel has been tabled. No discussion on this item. We will put this to a vote. Those in favor, a show of hands, please. Everyone in favor, no objection, no abstention. A separate voting at FC, anyone? No. Thank, I want to thank everyone. Agenda item number eight. 184 TB construction of footbridge with lift tower to connect the Appalachian Child Wind Tower Park and the Appalachian Child Estate 69 RG for Area 103 Mount Onshan Recreation, Culture Amenities, Mix and Amenity Packages and 28 TRS and 428RO Open Space at Hoi Fai Road. Paper PWSC 2020 number 8. It's a recommendation. Members are invited to recommend to upgrade to Category A for these projects. The 
cost $112.4 million, $74.3 million, $1120 million, and $104 million in money of the day prices. The relevant panels were consulted. And they were not against submitting these items to the PWSC for deliberation. Just of the reports have been tabled. We will put them to a vote. Those in favor, show of hands, please. Those in favor? Everyone in favor? No objection, no abstention. Uh, separate voting at FC, no. So this item is passed. Moving on. The no, I, I, item number nine, 331DS. These are all sewage works projects. Outlying Island Sewage Stage 2, Southland Tau Sewage Works 339DS, North District Sewage Stage 1, Phase 2C, Stage 2, Phase 1, 346DS, Upgrading of Two Moon Sewage, Sewage 1, 362DS, Sewage for Ma Yao Tong Village in Chen Quan O. Paper PWSC Bracket 2020 2021 number 9. Members are invited to recommend to the Finance Committee upgrading to Category A in money of the day prices. The costs are $1688.8 million, $179.7 million, $431.2 million, and $179.4 million in money of the day prices. Uh, different dates, the government consulted the relevant panels. They agreed to submit this item to the PW to this committee for this. the gist of the discussion has been tabled. We're putting this item to a vote. We have a quorum. Those in favor, put up your hands, please. Everyone. No abs uh, no objection, no abstention, and no one has asked that this item be voted on separately at the Finance Committee. So this item is passed. Next item, 43 CG and 265RS. These are so for the cycle tracks connecting Northwest New Territories with New, uh, North East West New Territories, Sam Wun Chai Extension, PWSC bracket 2021 10%. So items were about upgrading to category A of these. So three, six, seven, eight. And the items, the government has consulted the relevant panels. And they agreed to submit the items for, for the liberation, the gist of the Discussion has been tabled. Those in favor of the item, put up your hands, please. Mr. Andrew Wen, do you agree? You're in favor. Any objections? No objection, no abstention. Everyone's in favor. No one has asked that this be voted on separately, the FC. Thank you. Agenda item number 11, 194 TB, trans Transport Infrastructure Works for Development at Diamond Hill, and 472RO, Water Feature Park and Landscaped Walk at Diamond Hill. Uh, the paper PWSC bracket 2020 21. Uh, the government has recommended that these items be upgraded to category 8, $1.8 $1 billion, and 600 or so million dollars to relevant panels were consulted and they expressed their support for submitting these items to this committee for deliberation. It just uh, has been tabled. Those in favor, please pull up your hand. Those in favor. Any objections? No. No abstention. No objection. And no one has asked that this be voted on separately at the Finance Committee. Agenda item number 12. 32 LJ additional courtrooms and associated facilities at lower ground fourth floor in the high court building. The relevant paper PWSC bracket 2020 21 number 12. This item is about upgrading the works to category A in money of the day prices. The cost is about $152 million. The government consulted the relevant panel in May this year. Uh, the panel on judicial services was consulted. Members were in favor of submitting the item to this committee for deliberation. A gist of the discussion has been tabled. Those in favor, pull up your hands, please. Those in favor, everyone. Any objection? No abstention. Everyone's in favor. No one has asked that this be voted on separately at the FC. Fine, and we have agenda item number three, four, four, four. Our all lay you will waterfront enhancement project construction of a public landing facility, and four o nine. Our all lay you will waterfront enhancement project development of a waterfront promenade and related improvement works. The paper PWFC bracket twenty 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 one number thirteen. 
It's a recommendation of rec uh, upgrading the works to category A, one six four million dollars and one. Thirty million dollars, respectively. On twenty fifth of May this year, the government consulted the relevant panels. Members were in favor of submitting the items to this committee for deliberation. A gist of the relevant reports has been tabled. Those in favor, a show of hands, please. Five. We we'll just have the quorum. Everyone's in favor. No objection. No abstention. And no one requested this to be voted on separately at the FC. Thank you. We have passed these items and they will be submitted to the FC as soon as possible. This is a 21st meeting of this year and the final meeting of this legislative year. And in this legislative session, we have almost 44 hours of meeting. So we, there has been additional meetings. So I want to thank everyone for the effort. I want to thank members for their active participation over the past year. I also want to thank the representatives from different government bureaus and departments for attending our meetings of this committee. I want to thank everyone for the support for me as the chairperson of this PWSC. I know we have had dispute and they have been very understanding. So the meeting's concluded. Thank you. I want to thank you all.